thanks for stopping by to check out another fun-filled, action-packed, exciting adventure a Vintage Audio Review. In this episode, I'm going to talk about this realistic APM-100 power meter. The first catalog to carry the APM-100 was the 1977 catalog. Boy, do I miss Radio Shack. I miss them a lot. But there is a great website that has darn near all their catalogs that you can browse through and I use that website a lot for research and I will list a link to the website in the description below. Anyway, I digress. So in 1977, the APM-100 listed for a price of $19.95, which is about $30 in today's money, according to the inflation calculator. What's interesting is that the APM-100s can be found on eBay for between $40 and $100 quite regularly. There were a couple of other power meters that Radio Shack sold over the years, but this was the first and the least expensive one, and also the least feature-filled one. I'll flip around back, and hopefully it shows up. There are uh, terminals for connecting speaker wires to with, uh, well, I use banana jacks, but you can connect regular speaker wires, or they do have RCA jacks if you wanted to connect to your speakers that way. It also has a 4 ohm and 8 ohm switch to set your impedance of the speaker. So I was always curious how accurate the meter was and hence this video. The way I did the test was I hooked up a Yamaha receiver that's rated at 130 watts per channel into 4 ohms or 110 watts per channel into 8 ohms and then I connected the APM100 across each load and measured the power that the meter was reading versus what the QA402 audio analyzer was reading. And you'll get to see that here in a few moments. I know you're excited to see that. <laughs> and then I also will show you the schematic and an analysis I did on the schematic. And I will have a little discussion about what it all kind of means. So the first power meter level I'm going to check is for 10 milliwatts or 0 0.01 watts as indicated on the face of the APM-100. Now we are set for 4 ohm loads and the back of the APM-100 is set for a 4 ohm load. So I've got 10.5 milliwatts that's close enough and we are reading pretty darn close. Looks like we're accurate there. So now I'm going to go up to 0.1 watts or 100 milliwatts and we'll see what that shows. Okay, so we are now set for 100 milliwatts, basically, 102 milliwatts in a 4 ohms, but that's close enough. And you can see that the left channel looks pretty close to 100 milliwatts, and the right channel is reading just a little bit more than 100 milliwatts. Okay, so we are at 1 watt, and it looks like both meters are reading fairly close to 1 watt. Uh, the right channel looks a little bit more accurate than the left, but they're pretty darn close. Next stop, 10 watts. So here we are at 10 watts, and they're both reading pretty much 10 watts. The left channel might be just a needle's width shy, but for the most part, I'm pretty happy with that reading. I'm not sure what the mark between 10 and 100 watts indicates, but we'll zoom in on that and find out. I'm guessing it's 50 watts, but we will see here fairly quickly. So we're reading a little over 50 watts in the left channel and a little under 50 watts in the right channel, but the power meter is reading pretty much 50 watts, so once again I would call that pretty accurate. Now we'll go to 100 watts and see what happens. Okay, we are at 100 watts basically, and it looks like the power meter is reading about 100 watts for both channels. So I would say it's doing a pretty good job. Now we are at 1 kilohertz, I should point that out. And what I'm going to do now is go back to 200 hertz and see if our readings are as accurate. So I've set the QA402 for a frequency of 200 hertz at a power output of 5 watts and a 4 ohms. And we are indicating 50 watts on the APM100. So the APM100 is not going to do much of a job at measuring power at 200 hertz. Now I'm going to change the frequency to 500 hertz and see if it's any more accurate. Okay, so 
we are now at 500 hertz with 10 watts into 4 ohms and we're a little bit better here we're a little bit above 10 watts so that's not too bad let's see what happens if we go down to 1 watt okay so we're at about 1 watt at uh, 500 hertz and we are a little bit over a watt according to the APM 100 so it's not too bad there so here we have the schematic diagram for the APM-100. Radio Shack was kind enough to have this inside their owner's manual. So one thing you can see is this R2 is switched in to the circuit to drop the voltage on the 8 ohm impedance selection for the speaker. And if you go to 4 ohm, the resistor isn't connected. I decided to model this circuit in a program called Tina TI. It's a free software program from Texas Instruments that lets you model circuits and analyze them. I went ahead and measured the voltage from here to here with an input signal from here to here, and I believe I swept it from 100 hertz to 2 kilohertz. I also did not model in this thermistor into the model, which really won't affect the frequency response. I did that and I got this plot. So what you have is the gain is the greatest at 100 hertz, and then as we go down, the gain gets even less. So at 1 kilohertz, we have less gain than at 100 hertz, and that's really what we saw when we looked at the power meter's performance with a 100 hertz signal applied. Also, we did 500 hertz. So at 500 hertz, we would be at this point. We're closer to 1 kilohertz, and we did see not that bad of a reading at 500 hertz. The gain isn't a lot different at, than at 1 kilohertz, but it was uh, greater than 1 kilohertz. So that's kind of why it looked a little bit better at 500 hertz than at 100 hertz. So one thing you might be wondering is, does the APM-100 add any distortion, uh, any measurable distortion to my system if I hook it up across my loudspeakers? And the answer from what I saw is no, it didn't really change the distortion readings that I was measuring. From the, so as you saw from the data, the APM 100 is fairly accurate at 1 kilohertz. I'm not sure why they chose 1 kilohertz other than that seems to be the standard frequency for a lot of audio measurements, but it is indeed pretty accurate there. So the APM 100 does a pretty good job with a 1 kilohertz tone in giving a pretty precise value of power. There is indeed a lot of energy below say 500 Hertz that you will see if you're watching music being displayed on a spectrum analyzer but 1 kilohertz seems to be the standard and it did very well there with the 1 kilohertz tone. If you go a little bit lower, a little bit higher it's probably still okay but if you go down much lower in frequency it's not going to give you a very good indicator of what the power is. I do have another realistic power meter. It's an LED one, real fancy compared to this. And at some point I will measure that and see how frequency sensitive that is. Once again, I thank you for watching this video and I would enjoy any comments that you might make, I think. And if you have not subscribed, please do so and have a great day or night.